Hi, I'm John Schneider, and welcome to Introduction to Algorithmic Problem Solving Using Python. In this course, we'll spend quite a bit of time learning the ins and outs of a particular computer language, namely Python. But while you're learning to use Python, you'll also be learning skills that are universal to solving a wide range of problems that span multiple disciplines. So at the conclusion of the course, you'll have solved a number of challenging problems and, in fact, be able to go off on your own and solve any number of hard problems. But in addition to that, if you have an interest in doing so, you'll also be well equipped to learn to program in other languages, such as C or Java. Furthermore, you'll be much better prepared to dive into more advanced topics in computer science. Now, to help clarify what the course is about, let's pick apart the course title. This course is an introduction. The assumption I'm making is that you have no prior programming experience. If you do have prior programming experience, either using Python or with another language, that's fine. I'm fairly certain you'll learn many new things, but at times you'll have to be patient as we cover things that are already familiar to you. And in fact, even if you have no prior experience, a certain degree of patience is required while we start by laying the initial foundation of concepts. You've probably watched the construction of a building where it seems that little progress is being made while the foundation is being laid. But once it's in place, boom, a structure can rise on top of that foundation really quickly. That's essentially what we'll do with this course. Once we have a strong foundation in place, we'll quickly be able to solve all kinds of neat problems. The course title mentions algorithmic problem solving. What does algorithmic mean? And one definition of an algorithm is a process or set of rules to be followed in a calculation or other problem solving operation. Essentially, we want to develop the tools, techniques, and constructs that allow us to systematically describe and implement the solution to any computable problem. So for example, we'll discuss programming constructs such as a decision structure where the program performs different operations depending on the outcome of some test. And we'll discuss loops where a set of operations is repeated a certain number of times. And these constructs and many others that we'll learn appear throughout computer science and programming. They aren't specific to the particular language we'll use and in a sense these constructs are universal to programming and more generally to algorithmic problem solving. One thing to note is that this is not a course on algorithms themselves. When a computer scientist sees algorithms in connection with a course, often the first thoughts that spring to mind are associated with the quest for the best algorithm, the best way to solve a given problem. For example, what's the fastest algorithm for sorting a list? And how does one characterize the speed of an algorithm or the amount of computational resources it requires? These are not topics we'll directly address in this course. The course title mentions problem solving. Although we'll start slowly while we lay a foundation of understanding, before long you'll be implementing solutions to a broad range of problems touching on areas such as encryption, graphics, and mathematics. Because solving these meaningful problems requires the use of various concepts that we'll have discussed, the problems serve to teach these concepts. They essentially show you how different techniques are used in practice. I know many of the problems will prove challenging, but I believe they're also very doable. I hope you'll find them interesting, and in fact, if you stick with them and obtain a solution, you'll often find the problems rewarding and dare I say it, even fun. Keep in mind, however, that these problems wouldn't be rewarding if they weren't also challenging. And of course, you won't feel that sense of reward unless you persevere and obtain a solution. So definitely make an effort to hammer away at the problems until you arrive at a solution. Finally, the title mentions, at least parenthetically, the computer language Python. Python is used throughout industry and academia to solve a host of cutting edge problems. It's an extremely powerful language where just a few lines of code can accomplish quite a bit. We could say it's an expressive language. And yet it is, compared to many other industrial strength languages, remarkably easy to use 
even if it may not seem that way at times. Furthermore, the language itself is actively maintained and available for free. Okay, that's a broad overview of the course. I hope you find these videos educational as well as challenging and again, fun. As the course progresses, please be sure to actively implement things on your own. It's hard to emphasize this strongly enough. If you simply passively watch these videos, you won't get nearly as much from them as you will if you write your own code. So good luck and work hard.